Okay, so first let me thank the organizers for inviting me and for giving me the opportunity to speak here. So my talk will basically be about GKZ systems and how they, in some sense, encode the geometry of families of Laurent polynomials. So more precisely speaking, I will try to explain you that the GK systems and Gaussmannian systems of Laurent polynomials are actually quite close. And if one has this relationship be between the Gaussmannian systems and the GKZ systems, one can show that the GKZ systems actually come from geometry. So one is able to endow these systems with a mixed Hodge module structure and so on. And the hope is actually that in some sense everything is computable so that you can compute the Hodge filtration, the weight filtration on these systems. And well, the fact that everything sh should be computable and is computable in certain cases has nice consequences to mirror symmetry. And well, I will show you how to prove several mirror statements for toric varieties, for complete intersections in toric varieties, for toric vector bundles, and so on. But before this, let's start with something really, really simple, namely the definition of a GKZ system. So what is the initial data for the GKZ system? Well, it's first of all a d plus one times n plus one integer matrix where I will denote the columns of A by A0 up to AN and the general entry of this matrix I will denote by AKI. Well, the second initial datum for the GKZ system is a parameter vector beta. Here I choose beta in ZD plus one. So normally it's in CD plus one, but for geometric applications, this ZD plus one is enough. So this is the, in some sense for geometry, the most interesting case. Okay, so the GKZ system will live on a vector space, which I call V. It's a, simply a CN plus one with coordinates lambda zero up to lambda n. I have a ring of diff so algebraic differential operators, so every D module which will occur in this talk will be algebraic. So this is the ring of differential operators. And then I define a submodule of Zn plus one, namely the relations among the columns of the matrix A. And having this submodule, I'm able to define various differential operators. So for GKZ systems, there are two types which are important. Namely, on the one hand, the so-called box operators and they are built out of these relations, namely for one relation in L, I get a binomial operator, namely the first term is uh, well built from the negative Li, and the second term is built from the positive Li. Well, and the second type of operator are the so-called Euler vector fields, and these Euler vector fields are built from the uh, no, from the rows of the matrix A. So they are in one-to-one -one correspondence to the rows of the matrix A. Okay, and then I define simply a left ideal in DV, which is generated by all these box operators and the Euler vector fields minus the components of this parameter vector beta. Well, and then the GKZ system is simply a cyclic left D module. So I mod out this ideal I. And I have to uh, make some assumptions, namely first that my matrix A is of this type. Well, this is actually no restriction because I, as I said, I want to prove that something, so the GKZ system should come from geometry. But if it, comes from geometry, it should be regular holonomic, and one can show that every GKZ system is actually isomorphic to a GKZ system of this type. Well, and then I do uh, well another standard assumption, namely that the um, vectors A0 up to AN 
generate me the whole lattice set D plus one. So actually this can be relaxed, but for the ease of exposition, I just assume that for granted. Okay, now let's talk about isomorphism classes of GK set systems in the sense that I fix A and then I want to know for varying beta which GK set systems are actually isomorphic. And this was done among other things by Mutsumi Saito. He did it in much greater generality. For example, he looked at all beta in, uh, in actually in, in complex parameters, but as I said, we restrict to integer. And basically for us, I won't explain the, the whole result. There are two geometrically interesting cases. Here I make an extra assumption, which I will explain uh, uh, in the examples, namely that the semi-group NA is saturated. So what does that mean? I uh, look at this example. So I have three columns. <coughs> and um, as I said, um, my matrix A has a special form, namely I have here a matrix B, which is just one and minus one, and then I build from this matrix B the matrix A. So I, um, I draw now these two, well, vectors. Here it's just only numbers, so one and minus one. And then, well, how is, um, with, are these re vectors related, um, these two vectors related to these ones? Well, I just lift them and add the first column. Okay, so if I now consider the cone which is generated by these columns and look at the integer points in this cone, I get my first interesting class, isomorphism class. And this is called NA. So it's the, well, positive integer linear relations of, um, positive integer linear combinations of the columns. Well, and the second interesting class is I take integral <coughs> points inside, uh, really in the topological interior of the negative cone. So in some sense, this cone is mirrored and pushed uh, so one down. Okay, I call this case the complete case. Why? Because if I look at my matrix B, the matrix B, so and yet now rational linear combinations of the vectors of the matrix B generate me the whole QD. I mean, here it is obviously that we are in this case, in the complete case. So the other case I will call, I mean, there's a complete case and there's a non-complete case. This is the matrix A. <coughs> and again, I draw the single vector this is one, I lift it and I add the other vector, I get a cone and I get a negative cone, these two um, isomorphism classes. And here what is important is that in some sense this cone does not lie over this cone. And this will have important consequences if we are looking at mirror symmetry. So basically how you should think about these two case is the complete case and the non-complete case. Well, this case, if you know a little bit about toric geometry and you have one and minus one, this is the fan of the complex projective space, or so CP1. Well, and this is just the vector space over points. So this will be in some sense related to mirror symmetry of, vec um, of vector bundles over toric varieties. And here, it's, I mean, it's a trivial vector bundle over a point. Okay, <clears throat> now this is the GKZ side. Now let's get some geometry into play. So I have my matrix B. This is of course then a D, plus, a D times N integer matrix. I define a torus T, this, which is just uh, C star up to the power of D. This coordinates T1 up to D. I get a parameter space lambda, which is Cn with coordinates lambda one up to lambda n, and I associate to, the, to this 
guides a family of Laurent polynomials, which I call phi. <coughs> well, and the exponents here of this Laurent polynomial are actually the columns of my matrix B. Okay, so now I have GK set systems, I have Laurent polynomials. So what is the aim? The aim is to study with the relationship between these GK set systems and Gauss-Mannin systems of these Laurent polynomials. So let me just shortly or very briefly repeat what is a Gauss-Mannin system. Well, Gauss-Mannin systems are a generalization of the Gauss-Mannin connection. So what is the Gauss-Mannin connection? So assume you have a proper smooth map between, let's say, uh, smooth algebraic varieties, then the Erisman vibration theorem says that you have a C infinity trivialization, which means that the cohomology of the fibers glue together to a local system. And then I can define a vector bundle with a flat connection whose local system of flat sections is exactly this local system of the cohomology. Well, if you want to generalize either to non-proper and or non-smooth maps, you have in some sense a price to pay. And the price is to pay is that you won't deal anymore with connections, but with D modules. And this is exactly the Gauss-Mannin system. So it will come in two flavors, namely, first you have um, the normal Gauss-Mannin system, so you take the structure sheaf here on my space t times lambda, you apply the direct image and take cohomology, and this will be a regular holonomic D module, which is generically, at least generically, a flat vector bundle, and this flat vector bundle has fiber, the D minus one's cohomology of my fiber of the family of Laurent polynomial at that point. Well, and the other thing is that I have, in some sense, a proper Gauss-Mannin system. Here I apply to the uh, um, structure sheaf the proper direct image functor, take cohomology. I can get, again, a regular holonomic D module, which is, again, generically flat, and this time measures me cohomology with compact support. Okay. So, there is a natural adjunction morphism between these two Gauss-Mannin systems, between the proper direct image and the direct image. And, well, on the level of a generic fiber of the vector bundle, this is just Poincaré duality. So, this is, in some sense, a generalization to of Poincaré duality for these fibers. Okay, so now I can state the first theorem. So recall, I have a matrix A, and this is of this special type, uh, B, and from this B, I build my family of Laurent polynomials phi. So the theorem gives me actually a morphism from the Gauss-Mannin system to the GK set system. So this is not an isomorphism, but in some sense, the kernel and co-kernel of this morphism are of the easiest possible type. I mean, they are trivial vector bundles. And I can also identify this kernel and co-kernel. They are trivial vector bundle with fiber isomorphic to the D minus one's cohomology or the D's cohomology of, in some sense, my ambient space T of a fiber of the Laurent polynomial. So, uh, remember this beta in NA, this, um, this was one isomorphism class of um, the uh, uh, GK set systems, one interesting isomorphism class. For the other interesting isomorphism class, this was this interior of the negative cone, I get the dual sequence. So actually this proves that M beta A for beta NA and m beta prime for beta prime and minus n a prime are holonomic duals. And here again, I have um, morphism from the GK set system to now the proper Gauss-Mannin system, and the kernel and co-kernel are again of very simple type. 
Okay, so if I restrict to a generic point, these um, exact sequences are something which you all know. Namely, they are just the parts of the long exact cohomology um, sequence of, of uh, relative cohomology with respect to T, the torus, and phi, the fiber of the Laurent polynomial. Okay, so this theorem actually generalizes work of Baturev and Steenstra, namely in the sense that, well, um, actually there's there's a similar sequence uh, in Steenstra, but Steenstra gives all the credit to Baturev. Namely, Steenstra, Steenstra writes down this sequence, but restricted to the smooth locus of the D module. So actually, what they prove is that the Gaussmannian connection, so the, I restrict the Gaussmannian system to the smooth locus, then I get the Gaussmannian connection, is isomorphic to the restriction of the smooth locus of the GK set system, modulo kernel and co kernel. Okay, so these are for now um, exact sequences of regular holonomic D modules, but actually they carry a mixed Hodge module structure. And I mean, this is not clear just from the exact sequences because, I mean, these three guys here are naturally, because they come from geometry, they are mixed Hodge modules. But the problem is the category of mixed head Hodge modules is not stable by extension. So in some sense, it comes out of the proof that the GK set system is or comes from geometry and is there for a mixed Hodge module. So let me very, very briefly um, sketch the proof. So what I do is I embed my torus T on which the fiber of the Laurent polynomial lives into complex space in such a way that I can rewrite the fiber as a hyperplane section. And then I take the structure sheaf of this torus seen as a D module inside the, uh, in, inside the projective space and apply a Radon transformation. And then, in some sense, it's more or less tautological that this gives me uh, um, the Gaussmannian system of the family of Laurent polynomials. Okay, um, now I can do this Radon transformation with respect to different kernels. I can do it with respect to the constant kernel. I can do it with respect to a kernel which is in some sense the, the complement of the universal hyperplane. And this gives me then, well, a long exact sequences of Radon transformations. And then I apply a theorem of Daniolo and Eastwood which um, compares Radon transformation and Fourier Laplace transformation. And the Fourier Laplace transformation, I can explicit co compute. And this gives me, for this term, the GK set system. OK. So what are mixed Hodge modules? Um, I will certainly not define what a mixed Hodge module is. But well, for us in this talk, a mixed Hodge module is a regular holonomic D module carrying a Hodge filtration and a weight filtration. And the question is now, if these GK set systems carry mixed Hodge module structures, can one compute it? So can one compute the Hodge filtration? Can one compute the weight filtration? So um, for this, I have to introduce a little bit of notation. So let denote FR, the order filtration, on the ring of differential operators. This induces me, by definition, a good filtration on the GK set system. And I have the Hodge filtration on M beta A. And the Hodge filtration is also a good filtration. The question if, is, is there a relation between this naive filtration by the order of differential operators and the Hodge filtration? Well, and the conjecture is, yes, there is. If Na is a saturated semigroup, then up to shift they are equal. Well, and this conjecture doesn't come out of the blue. We can compute it in some examples. So 
we can compute it if the columns of B are the primitive generators of the one-dimensional cones of a smooth Fano variety. So recall I had my matrix A. Then I had here 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and B. And if I have B, for example, 1, minus 1, this will correspond to P1. Then I know, okay, this, the GK set system with respect um, with, with respect to this matrix and for beta in AA is a mixed Hodge module and the Hodge filtration is the order filtration. Okay, so now for the weight filtration. Unfortunately for the weight filtration we have no precise conjecture yet, but we can say something. Namely, I told you that I have an adjunction morphism between the proper Gauss-Mannin system and the Gauss-Mannin system. So now I can compose, I can go from this um, GK set system up to here. And the nice thing is, I mean, this gives me a morphism of mixed Hodge modules that one can actually compute this morphism. And it is very simple, as it is given by a single differential operator, which is del to the power of beta minus beta prime. So this gives me the lowest weight part of the mixed Hodge module structure on M beta A. How I know this? Well, because um, O is a pure, Mixed, uh, is a pure Hodge module. And then I apply the direct image and the proper direct image. Well, and the direct is this, or I mean, the, these are affine maps. Um, the direct image um, mm, um, does not decrease weight, and the proper, Im di um, proper direct image does not decrease weight. So I know that this morphism actually gives me the lowest weight part on M beta A. Okay, now one can ask, is there a geometric meaning of this lowest weight part? Well, and actually there is. So I have my um, family of Laurent polynomials phi. I take the exponents together with zero and take the convex hull, and this is usually called the Newton polytope of um, this Laurent polynomial. From this Newton polytope, I can construct the projective variety. This is a toric projective variety. And then I can compactify phi, so phi, uh, phi admits a natural compactification such that the fibers of phi compactify to hyperplane sections of XB. And this gives me a family, big, uh, big phi, ZB to V. And, big, uh, well, I could um, compute with my uh, co-author Christian Sevenheck that the minimal weight part on the um, Gauss-Mannin system is actually isomorphic to the direct image of the intersection, so the intersection cohomology D module of ZB, which is the D module which corresponds under the RAM, uh, under the Riemann-Hilbert correspondence to, to the intersection cohomology complex of ZB. So um, that this, the lowest weight part, um, is actually isomorphic to the, di to the zeros cohomology of the direct image of this um, um, intersection cohomology D module. Well, and then the theory of Saito says that this actually decomposes, so this is Saito's famous decomposition theorem, and we could actually compute also the decomposition, and the decomposition is simply um, also an intersection cohomology D module, on V plus a constant vector bundle. And this uh, decomposition is in some sense um, 
an intersection cohomology theoretic analog to the vanishing intersection cohomology. So I just want to remind you if I have a smooth variety and um, look at the left shed pencil of this variety, then the cohomology of a generic fiber decomposes, namely it decomposes into the cohomology of the ambient variety. So this is played by this guy and the vanishing cohomology. And the vanishing cohomology is generated by, well, the vanishing cycles with respect to this left shed pencil. And this is played by, uh, this role is played here by this intersection cohomology D module. Uh, sorry. Yes? Um, t, t times lambda to uh, v. Uh, v is, uh, t times yes, uh, sorry, yeah, I, I should say that. So v is z lambda times lambda. Okay, so in some sense this fixes me a little bit of the geometry of this GK set system. And now I want to come to quantum cohomology. So I want to sketch this only very, very briefly. So let X be a smooth projective variety. Then I have the cohomology ring of X. I have a basis T0 up to T mu. And I take, well, a, a homology class beta in H2XC modulo torsion. And then I can define Rom of Witten invariants and they count the number of n mark genus G, G curves in X, satisfying several constraints. So I want to be very sketchy here. I won't explain any more. Um, well, and this Grom of Witten invariants actually define me the small quantum product. And what is the small quantum product? Well, the small quantum product is a family of multiplications on the cohomology ring. Well, and this family is here uh, indexed by the parameter Q, and Q is in the space K, which is H2XC modulo a lattice. So this K is usually called the complexified Keller moduli space. And then the small quantum product is actually defined by three, genus zero, three point Grom of Witten invariance, where here this TK is the Poincaré dual of the TK with respect to the spaces. Okay, so this quantum product has remarkable properties, namely on the first end it is graded commutative and it has a unit and the really strong part is that it is associative. And it is, that it is associative gives you strong recursion relations among the Grom of Witten invariants. So for example, for P2, you just need one Grom of Witten invariant to compute all other genus zero Grom of Witten invariants. So actually, the small quantum product looks rather innocent because, well, it's, uh, one, one needs only three point uh, Grom of Witten invariants, but one can reconstruct rather much from these quantum product. Okay, so now, now I have this product, but well, then Dubrovin defined something, well, a connection where one is able to, well, in some sense, encode this product in a more differential geometric term. And for this, well, one simply takes a trivial vector bundle over the base space Zz times K. So recall K was this complexified scalar moduli space on which the small quantum product lives. With trivial fiber H star X. So I will usually denote this uh, vector bundle together with the connection as zero QDMX. You will know why after a while. Well, and this flat connection well, this, there is actually the small quantum product is encoded in this flat connection. Namely, if I um, um, take the connection in the QI direction, QI is here um, coordinate on K, then this invokes me here the 
multiplication with Ti, so the small quantum product with Ti. And then if I take the connection with respect to dz, this gives me here the multiplication with the first churn class of x. Well, and nu is simply uh, some grading operator. Okay, but now what is important for us is the following, namely that this Dubrovin connection has irregular singularities. Uh, it has a pole of order two at z equals zero. And well, I mean, this is a holomorphic vector bundle with a meromorphic connection. And if I forget the holomorphic vector bundle, if I localize along z equals zero, I get a meromorphic bundle, or let's say a d-module, and this underlying d-module is usually called the quantum d-module of x. And so in some sense the motto is, so the quantum d-module is not equivalent to the Dubrovin connection. You have to take the quantum d-module plus an O lattice, which means uh, locally free, or in this uh, here, a free O submodule of the quantum D module, which when you localize this O submodule, you get back the quantum D module. So you get back the meromorphic connection, which is a D module. Okay. Now, sorry? Sorry, I, I did. The, um, well, I mean, here I've, um, I, 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 I've written down um, this holomorphic vector bundle, so this is the O lattice. And if I tensorize this um, a trivial vector bundle with O star Z, then I get a meromorphic connection, which is a D module. So, I mean, there's a really basic example, which one can do is the following. Namely, if I take z, z, z minus, uh, z minus one, so this is a d module, so dz acts on it, and if I take z, z, well, this is in some sense a sub lattice inside this d module, but now I can change the sub lattice, so I can multiply it with z n. And this gives me many different choices of sublattices. And the choice of the sublattice, in some sense, gives me the, well, the actually shape of this connection matrix. I mean, I need a basis to write something down. Okay, so, well, this structure is also called, well, non-commutative Hodge structure. And the question is, how can one recon or how can, can one construct a non-commutative Hodge structure outside, uh, so uh, with singularity theory? Well, for this one needs the so-called Fourier-Laplace transformation of a regular d-module, and um, here I will restrict to the one-dimensional case. So M is a regular d-module, regular even at infinity, which is in some sense automatic because I'm assuming algebraic d-modules. Well, and then the Fourier-Laplace transformation of M is M, as a, so it's the same C-vector space, but now T acts as minus D tau and DT acts as tau. So if one starts with a regular D-module, then the Fourier-Laplace transform of this D-module will be smooth outside um, tau equals zero, regular at tau equals zero, and in general, irregular at tau equal infinity. So um, if I remember well, Claude ex also explained it in his talk. Okay, so now we made some progress. We have irregular, irregular singularities, but at tau equal infinity. And for that, I introduce a co coordinate change. I said tau is equal to one over z. So this transports me the irregular singularity from infinity to z equals zero. So the first step is made. So the basic example of this is if I consider the d-module ctdt mod out by t minus one. So this is a d-module which has support at t equal one. 
I apply the Fourier Laplace transformation, so I get this D module. Then I apply um, this coordinate change, and the outcome is this D module. And as um, Andrea Daniolo explained in his talk uh, um, on Tuesday, now one just um, has this uh, Fuchs criterion, and one, one sees with the help of this Fuchs criterion, I mean that this is an irregular singularity at z equals zero. Okay, now I have explained what uh, happens on the level of D modules. Now, what, is, what about the Hodge filtration if M is a mixed Hodge module? Well, the problem is if I take a filtration set, then it is stable under the action of T, by definition, which is Z squared DZ. So this is the good news, because, I mean, if I want to construct the lattice, it should be stable under Z squared DZ because I had a pole of order two for the de Broglie connection. But the bad news is that it is not stable under multiplication with Z because Z is dt up to the power of minus one. And, well, the filtration is usually not stable under this operator. So the problem is that F is not a filtration of OZZ modules on the Fourier Laplace transformation. So, but there is a solution to this problem, which is uh, due to Claude Savard. So let P large. So then um, the Hodge filtration will, in some sense, um, satisfy this um, generation property so that the P plus L step of the Hodge filtration can be generated by FPM by multiplying it with uh, this operators DTJ. Now I consider the image of FPM in M delta T, so in, in some sense in some micro localization of M. This image I will de uh, denote by MP. And then I apply a procedure which is called saturation. So I take this MP and sum with some multiples of dt minus i plus or no, times some overall factor dt minus p. So this overall factor will guarantee that in some sense this definition is independent of the choice of p. So if I take, for example, not p but p plus 1, then this factor will guarantee me that the outcome is in some sense the same. And now, um, Claude proves in his paper that G0 M hat is actually a lattice. In particular, it's locally free inside the so-called localized Fourier Laplace transformation of the module M, which I st started. Well, and this lattice G0 M and this D module M are actually the good candidates for mirror symmetry. So as we have seen, we have a D module which is, well, regular at Z not equal zero, irregular at Z equal zero, and we have a nice um, lattice inside this D module which, well, resembles in some sense the um, Dubrovin connection. Well, and this procedure also works in families. This was worked out by Duey and Sabah, but one has to be, uh, well, more, um, so it's, it's more, more difficult when one has to take care of the, uh, um, of the singularities of these D modules, so they have to satisfy a certain non-characteristic property and so on. So, but I mean, to get the idea, I think the one-dimensional case is enough. Okay, so now what happens to our four-term sequence if I apply the localized Fourier Laplace transformation? So we had here the kernel and co-kernel of these maps. So these are um, trivial D modules. So because I'm in the algebraic category, so the um, sections, the global sections of these D modules are just polynomial functions. So if I apply DT, I will kill them. So the kernel and co-kernel are actually DT torsion. If I localize with respect to dt, I will kill the kernel and co-kernel. So 
So I will get this outcome and the horizontal maps will be isomorphisms. Now the question is, what about the vertical maps? And here comes into play um, this, these nice little pictures I draw. So we are here in the complete case. So Rico, what is the complete case? The complete case was that I have these two cones of isomorphism classes where the integer points here, um, in some sense, um, um, uh, are in, well, the integer points g gives, me, gives me the beta of uh, the GK set system. And now let's say I'm, I have an integer point here and I will go to here. Well, then this will um, correspond in some sense to a, a map of GK set systems. So this will be a minus one zero and this will be zero zero. And this will just be multiplication with D zero. But multiplication with D zero, so here we uh, did the localized Fourier Laplace transformation with respect to D zero, D lambda zero. And D lambda zero is actually Z minus one. But because I did the localized Fourier Laplace transformation, this map will actually become an isomorphism. But if I have an isomorphism after lo um, um, localized Fourier Laplace transformation between these two isomorphism classes, actually everything becomes isomorphic. So in this complete case, everything, well, everything just becomes well, one big isomorphism class. So and this is the theorem which I proved again with my co-worker Christian Sebenheck, for any beta in z d, well, then this becomes here an isomorphism. And because we identified here this direct image of the intersection cohomology complex um, with the image between um, these guys, but now they are isomorphic, so actually the Fourier-Laplace transformation of all them boils down to one single D module, and this will be then actually also isomorphic to the GK set system. So we have, we are, have now the really good advantage that we actually really can write down these guys. I mean, M beta A is a cyclic D module, so I can really, well, the Fourier Laplace transformation between the, uh, of this D module is trivial. I mean, you just rewrite the generators, that, that's all. So I can really write them down. So what is about the filtration? Well, differential forms, so or I, I can describe the Fourier Laplace transformed Gauss-Mannin system. So notice here that I write phi, which, um, so phi was defined from T lambda to Z times lambda. So I can factorize it into F and the projection. So on this factor, it's only the projection. Then I have a differential forms description of the Fourier Laplace transformed Gauss-Mannin system. And well, it's standard D module theory that it looks like this. And then I define the so-called Brieskorn lattice. Well, Brieskorn um, introduced the lattice in the um, case of local hypersurface singularities. And now I write here Brieskorn lattice, but actually I don't know a priori that this will be a lattice, let alone that it is locally free. I mean, this is a theorem that it is even coherent. Well, and we could prove that it is coherent, namely there exists a hypersurface theta in my parameter space lambda. This hypersurface theta is the so-called non-tame locus. So non-time means that at this locus, the, um, I mean, this, this T is here not compact, um, that some singularities will vanish in some sense to the boundary. Okay, so I have to take out this non-time locus and for any beta in ZD, I get an isomorphism, if I take out this bad locus, from the Brieskorn lattice to this Hodge theoretic lattice 
And again, I can express everything in terms of some submodule of GK set system, which is again explicitly computable. Okay, so the complete case is in some sense the good case. Um, ah, sorry, I forgot. I mean, this is of course related to work of Morihiko Saito. He proved in the local case. So, I mean, as I said before, Breezecon introduced this lattice in the local case, and Morihiko Saito proved then that this Breezecon lattice is actually of Hodge theoretic origin. And Claude Sabat proved, in some sense, the, the same theorem in, in the global case for the case of a single tame function. Okay, now comes the non-complete case, and this is in some sense the bad case. So here, bad things happen, for example, non-isolated singularities, or that the family of Laurent polynomials is in some sense generically non-tame, and so on. So I cannot take out, in some sense, the non-tame locus. So it's really, uh, well, difficult. So, just recall the picture. The picture was the following. It was this picture. And now the problem is, I, with multiplication with Z, I can only go to this cone. So, I mean, this, these two cones were the interesting cones. If I multiply with Z after localized Fourier Laplace transformation, this will give me an isomorphism class and this will give me an isomorphism class, but I can't change the isomorphism classes here, so they are still different. And this is reflected in this theorem. So actually, the first component of the vector beta doesn't play any role, so it doesn't play a role anymore, so I can, uh, well, make it arbitrary. This is the multiplication with Z. And then the GK Z system is still, so um, the Gaussmannian system, the proper Gaussmannian system is just simply uh, um, isomorphic to the localized Fourier Laplace transformation of the single GK set systems. I mean, it's still true that, th that these kernels and co kernels will vanish. I mean, this is trivial. Okay. Another problem for the non complete case is that the Breezecon lattice is very badly behaved. I mean, we, cannot, uh, we can prove that it is not coherent. But, I mean, there is a substitute. So one has to use, in some sense, a logarithmic version. So I take my torus T and I can embed it into an affine toric variety, which is again built uh, by this matrix B. And I denote the boundary divisor by D. And then I have a, which we call logarithmic Breezecon lattice. So, I mean, here we only allow logarithmic poles along this divisor D. And what we could prove is that it is isomorphic to some, well, nicely expressible submodule in the Fourier Laplace transformed, loc um, uh, Fourier Laplace, localized Fourier Laplace transformed GK set system. Having this description, we can prove that it is locally free. But the problem is to prove, is it of Hodge theoretic origin? Well, and this is... Yes. Actually, it can be generically non-tame, but in some sense, well, we... Uh, we we, we could distinguish between good and bad singularities at infinity. So there are, in some sense, good singularities at infinity which doesn't interfere. So, uh, yes? I, um, ah, I, um, wait. Ah. Uh, you're right. I mean, um, if the singularities lie on the boundary divisor, then it is a good singularity, and otherwise it's bad. Yes. Well, and if we can compute the Hodge filtration on the GK SIT system, then we can prove that actually this logarithmic Breezecon lattice is of Hodge theoretic origin. 
Okay, so let's finally get to mirror symmetry. So let X be an n-dimensional smooth toric variety. We take the ample line bundles on X with the condition that minus KX plus the sum of Li is our nest. And let S be a generic section of E. Then I take the uh, zero locus of this S. This gives me the complete intersection Y. Here, this condition ensures me that Y is nest. And in this situation, I can define three types of chromov witten invariants. Namely, on the first hand, the chromov witten invariants of Y, the so called twisted chromov witten invariants of X. So here I should be more specific twisted with respect to the Euler class of this uh, vector bundle E, and so-called local gromov witten variants of E dual, so which in some sense compute me the gromov witten invariants of this dual vector bundle. Well, and the aim is now to find these three structures in singularity theory, so these three Dubrovin connections. So everything generalizes the small quantum product, and the Dubrovin connection exists for all three types. And now, what is the mirror? Well, EX is the toric vector bundle with fan sigma. So I build the matrix B out of the primitive generators of the one-dimensional cones of sigma. So that would be, uh, in some sense, um, well, for the vector bundle over the point, that would be a B is equal to 1. Well, it's very simple in this case. And then I construct my uh, family from before. And then I construct a map from the cons uh, um, complexified Kähler moduli space into lambda. So on the level of this Z, it's the identity. This construction uses toric geometry, so I don't want to explain it right now. Well, and then I can, in some sense, um, pull everything back. So this gives me a, the, well, small Landau-Ginsburg model phi and the non affin Landau-Ginsburg model psi. So let me just call it this map, um, this map kappa is non-characteristic with respect to every D module from above. So again, the computation is very simple. So we can just apply base change to um, compute the Gauss-Mannin system, the proper Gauss-Mannin system with respect to that map, or the, or the proper uh, the direct image with respect to the um, intersection, com intersection cohomology complex of this ZB. So everything is, again, expressible in terms of, well, GKZ type systems. Well, and then I call this big psi um, the so-called non-affine Landau-Ginsburg model. The small phi is the affine Landau-Ginsburg model. And then we have the following theorem. I mean, of course, for the theorem, we use given Tal's description uh, of the solution of the quantum D module, the, this hypergeometric description. I mean, this is this I equal J theorem. And we use also a paper of Man Mignon, which describes the quantum D module in terms of some um, hypergeometric system, but what pops out is the following, namely that the localized Fourier Laplace transformation of the Gauss-Mannin system is actually isomorphic to the quantum D module of local gromov witten invariants. The proper Gauss-Mannin system, so the localized uh, Fourier Laplace version, is isomorphic to the twisted Gauss-Mannin system, and the ambient quantum D module, here ambient means this D module does not capture everything from the gromov witten invariants from Y, but only classes which are induced from the ambient space. But I mean, this is current state of art. I mean, I think nobody can compute something different than ambient classes. Well, and this is actually isomorphic to the localized Fourier Laplace transformation uh, um, of this non-affine Landau-Ginsburg model. Well, and we have this isomorphisms on the, uh, on the level of quantum D modules, and conjecturally, they, uh, this is also true on the level of lattices. And again, this depends on the computation of uh, the 
hot filtration on the GK set system. So if we have that, we can prove it on the level of lattices. Well, actually, we have a slight bit more. Namely, we can identify the Dubrovin connection of this local chrome of Witten invariance with the logarithmic Briescon lattice. But I mean, in some sense, for us, this logarithmic Briescon lattice was in some sense meaningless. I mean, it was just there. Actually, it, its definition was inspired by mirror symmetry so that we could match. So, so we, for us, it's not clear if it has any geometric meaning. But I mean, if it comes from Hodge theory, then it's in some sense clear. OK, and then a final remark is, um, well, I have my adjunction morphism here. And this adjunction morphism should be seen as a mirror analog of the so-called quantum fair duality of codes given tile. So, I mean, there is ongoing work by Iritani Man Mignon, who in some sense, I mean, this quantum fair duality of codes in given tile is stated in terms of given tile cones. So I don't want to explain it, but let's just say I have a, um, a given tile cone with respect to uh, let's say the twisted chrome of Witten invariance, I have a given tile cone with respect to this local chrome of Witten invariance. And these cones, I mean, these are infinite dimensional cones, they map to each other. Then Iritani Man Mignon cook this down, they boil it down to, in some sense, a duality of quantum D modules. Well, and then we, we compared uh, our statement with there and just saw, well, okay, this isomorphism is actually their isomorphism between the quantum D modules. So this isomorphism is in some sense the mirror analog of this quantum there duality. Okay, so that's it. Thanks a lot. Thank you.